All right, so I run dead rail, which means there's no power to the rails. All my engines are battery powered, radio controlled. I have too many ways to turn a train around. So that means anything with lights in it needs to be battery powered. So I thought I would do a little tutorial on how I battery power this USA Trains caboose. All right, first thing we've got to do is get rid of the power pickups and that's this right here so all i'm going to do is cut the wires take this screw out right here and pull those out of the way now they're spring loaded so be careful when you pull them out pull them out slow so you don't lose all the parts in case you want to have the option to be able to put this thing back to stock and there's one on each truck we'll get that and then we'll take the caboose apart I do take the trucks off just so they're out of the way. And we'll worry about those wires once we get the car apart. To take the car apart, there are three screws that need to come out here. These are body screws, okay? So they can be a little challenging. Um, I use this wonderful little magnetizer thing and I magnetize my screwdriver to get the screws out. So get those three screws out, set them aside, and then we'll have to take apart either end of the caboose to access the other two screws that hold the body to the chassis. At either end, there are two screws that hold the soffit on over the decks. Okay, the caboose is still upside down. And I'm referring to these screws here. So there's an option, you can take apart all this stuff here, which is eight screws, and then the whole bottom chassis will come off and you can run the screwdriver straight down through, straight down through here. Or if you have a long screwdriver, you can get to these screws and then they'll come out. Okay, with the soffit pieces out of the way, that was this piece here, you expose what's underneath, which you can see there's a hole right here. There's a screw that holds the lid to the body. There's one on either end. That screw's got to come out. One last thing we need to do to get the lid off of the body is the top part of the ladders needs to needs to be moved so these just pull out very carefully like so we got to do it on either end <clears throat> kind of got to wiggle them back and forth and then the lid will come off There's the lid. Now, keep in mind these parts here, the ladder and the handrails and stuff like that for either end, those go into holes that are in the lid. Okay. Okay, with the lid off and out of the way, <clears throat> you can see that this is where the wires are that come from underneath from the chassis that were connected to the trucks and the power pickups on the trucks. So what I do is I just get in here, take these tiny little screws out, and I get those completely out of the way. I pull the wires through, so there's no question whatsoever. And then everything goes into a little baggie assigned for the caboose. I use this little set of tweezers with the point on them. And you can get in here and just pull those out from underneath. And that's pretty much it. Now here is where your power comes from. 
So there's little solder joints right there. All I'm going to do is solder in a whip that a nine volt battery can plug into. So there's two different ways you can do this. <clears throat> you can either load the end of your solder tip with some solder and drip it into place or see if you can just heat up the solder that's already there to get your wire to stick. And that's what we're gonna try first. So, you heat that up a little bit. And there should be just enough solder there to hold that wire into place. Of course, it's gonna make a liar out of me because I'm videoing. There we go. So that's in there. Get this other wire. In the meantime, I will tell you that I use pre-wired LEDs that I got off Amazon. They're really cheap and they work really well for projects like this. I think I'm gonna add more solder to this. So here's what I mean by pre-loading the tip. <clears throat> so I can put a little solder melted solder on there and then it'll drip down right onto there and we have good contact so i've already switched the switch to the on position underneath the caboose so all we need to do now is provide power so this is basically your track power is this battery so we'll plug this in and we'll see if we can get some blinky light action. <clears throat> now, before we do that, I will tell you this, that the power will run all the way through the whole body. So the contacts at the other end match up with the contacts on the roof. Whoa, camera falls over. So the contacts on the roof are gonna make contact there and what's important about these pre-wired LEDs is that you have proper polarity. So this is what I mean by a pre-wired LED. It's got the resistor built into it already. It's got in black and white. So we're just gonna test to see which side gets us power. That's not it. So red needs to be over here and black needs to be closest to you. There we go, now we got juice, okay? I don't, it's blinking because I can't hold it on there tight. So black is this side. It's all we need to remember is black is that side. Now let's see if we can get the uh, blinking light at the end to work. The blinking light is already in there. It is factory, it's a factory LED. So we're gonna see if polarity is proper to see if we can get this thing to blink. In order to test that, the lid has to be on. So there we go. We got blinky lights and the lights. Well, you can barely see it, but the lights are on on the inside. We're going to brighten that up by using LEDs. So there you go. That's good to go. Okay. So with our pre-wired LEDs, we need to, we know that black needs to go to this side. So let's just double check that to make sure that that's still factual it is okay so now here we have the lid that goes on this way but if we flip it over that means this side needs to be where all the black connections go the side that's closest to me now okay i've moved the body out of the way and now we have the lid here now this side needs to be black so if you have a terrible memory, you can just take a black Sharpie or something like that and put a B on one side here. But I should tell you that they do sell LED bulbs that will screw right into where these bulbs are. However, I do not have a bag of 50 of those. <laughs> so I'm using what I have. You can simplify this by getting LED versions of these bulbs. I honestly don't know where to find them, but uh, if anybody knows in the comments, you can say something about it. But um, all I'm going to do is the same thing I did to solder the whip in for
for the battery is I'm just going to take advantage of the solder that's here already and solder in three bulbs, taking the place of these three bulbs. And there's usually plenty of solder on all these. So just got to heat it up. Get that wire on there. Oh, I took it away too soon. That's good. Now in this case, black to black, red to red is already there. So that makes it simple. So there's one ready to go and that one will go to the the far end over here take the place of that bulb and then we'll just add another one here the reason why i'm switching over to leds is the nine volt battery will last 10 times longer using an led bulb than it will these incandescent bulbs so I've got two bulbs wired in. The third one, I'm just going to wire into here. This is uh, kind of like pushing the easy button. Now what I'm going to do is use a little bit of hot glue and um, hold these bulbs into place and um, hold the wires down so they're not all floppy all over the place so you don't see them through the windows. Now these USA Trains um, extended vision cabooses, all the windows are fogged so you can't really see anything anyway. We're just providing ambient light. And if you run your trains at night, it's kind of nice to know where the end of your train is. So I'll spare you the uh, process of putting the hot glue in there and I'll just show you what it looks like when it's done. You know, the only reason why I'm using these giant 10 millimeter bulbs is because they were ordered by accident and <clears throat> they work great for stuff like this. So um, there it is. They're hot glue gunned into place. I uh, got the wires glued down. I might put a little dab of glue there so that doesn't sag. But we don't want to be in the way of the body mount screws or the edges where the lid meets onto the body. So we're going to test this simply by just setting the body back in place here and we will put the lid back on and see if we've got light. I might as well do it in real time. That way if I screw up, I have witnesses. Set that into place. Make sure you have good contact. the blinky blinky I'm not seeing any lights though I wonder why let's check it out maybe these tabs need to be bent up a little more There we go. That was it. I don't know if you can see or not, but there are lights on now inside the caboose. And we're going to use the stock switch where you can just have the, the back blinking or all the lights on. So that's pretty much it. And then all you got to do now is put her back together, which is just a matter of putting screws back in. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Johnny, you left that nine volt battery flopping around inside the caboose. Well, if you're manhandling your trains like that, then don't leave it flopping around. But there's a reason why I left it flopping around. When it comes time to replace the battery, you don't have to take the entire caboose apart. These ends, pop off. All you got to do is slip a little flathead screwdriver in in the bottom here. This pops off 
and the whole ladder system and everything gets out of the way and you can use the door to access your battery now for me because i put 906s on i have to take the 906 coupler off because the screw that holds it on is going up inside the body and it prevents the door from opening but there's that function there stock switches and you got plenty of decent light to roll these things at night and know where the end of your train is and i think that's the most important thing and as far as other cabooses are concerned the aristocrat cabooses like these things here pretty much do the same thing the only difference is, is I put the 9 volt battery behind the toolbox underneath the car and their screws there's one on this end and one on this end similar to the USA trains caboose where the lid pops off now to put in LEDs you just need to figure out the polarity you don't need to mess with any of their standard uh, or any of their uh, existing circuit boards or anything like that you just need to find where the lights are connected and replace them um other than that that's it